Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Happy Friday. Uh, I am joined right now by Matthew Marsden, Blaze TV contributor and actor and producer extraordinaire. And this is going to be a fun one today. Um, We do have a little bit of an addition to the show, which is that now I have my husband, who is the director of this show, who can actually talk to us. So Stephen is in the control room. I am. And he... (laughs) Partake. (laughs) What is this wizardry? What is this witchcraft? Now, I have tried to tell him you are only allowed to speak when spoken to, but I don't know if that's going to hold. We'll try. I don't know. (laughs) Okay. I I don't know if that's going to hold. Stephen. Like, he's like, okay, I can speak. <laughs> so we're, we're going to, um, this is going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, and also, okay, can I tell you what I've been going through this week? Go, go for it. We'll get to the headlines, whatever, it's Friday. Okay. So I woke up one morning and my knee was incredibly swollen around one part of my kneecap. Okay. okay. And I, I mean, I legitimately, I had to limp while I was walking. I, it was like an elderly moment for me. I was like, what, what did I, I just slept and I woke up and now I'm limping and I don't know why. And then this big bruise developed where it was swollen. It was very strange. And I was and like, it was really I, nasty. It was gross. Thank you. Hold on. You were not, you were not told you could speak. I didn't tell you. <laughs> you didn't know. You were not told. <laughs> so. So I was like, what is going on? Am I dying? I don't understand. And by the evening, the swelling had almost totally gone down, but there's still like a really big brute here. I'm going to show you. The audience can't see it. Oh my so, But it was way worse. And I just wanted to know, I feel like I've described it enough to ask the audience, does anyone know if I'm dying? I'd like to know. <laughs> if you could let me know in the comments if I'm dying, that it's would be great. It, it was very weird. Did and I was like, it? Did you bang it on No, a- I didn't. I did not. Be- I mean, it was legitimately, I felt like it was also very hot. Like it felt hot, but it was not hot to the touch. So it was hot internally. I felt like it was on fire. It was very strange. Peter McCullough, if you're watching this oh, show. I was going to say, <laughs> after my comments on, uh, on the uh, you know what. I know that I'm not a doctor, so <laughs> oh, right, right. I better not say anything. So I'm like just that. saying, if anyone has had anything like that happen, um, to comment. Let me know. Am I dying? Do I have a blood clot that's about to like go to my whatever wherever it goes when you die? I, I don't know, but I would like to know in advance. So let me know. Um, so let's get into. I guess we'll get into the reason why we do this show. Ugh. Uh, So the New York Post reported this morning that top aides to President Biden secretly hatched a plan this past fall to replace Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, by recruiting outside allies to nudge her out the door. But apparently she said, "Uh uh-uh, not this B. I am, of course, the first black and first openly gay person to hold the position. And we all know that you can't get in the Biden administration without being a DEI member. And that's me, honey, and I'm not going anywhere. So apparently they were not successful, but um, God bless him for trying. I mean, she's the dumbest person <laughs> I've ever seen in that job. I mean, she's just a, a Can I? Car that's wreck. really saying something, too, because, the, I mean, there have been some very dumb press secretaries and yeah. very bad press secretaries. Like, I long for the days of uh, Raggedy Ann, the poor man's Raggedy Ann. Um, which of course was, what's her name? What's her name? Jen Psaki. Jen Psaki. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, even-, even that was the time that you could have come in. I'm just saying, sorry, I was talking to someone else. Oh dear me. You're directing my show and talking to someone else. I don't know what to say about that, wow. Stephen. I wow. think that's on the couch. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I'd miss him. Um, so, but this, I mean, can you imagine? I read another story about, this was wild. I was on Real, Real Clear Politics, I believe. And it was about uh, Kamala Harris, one of her Secret Service agents, who was a woman, 
went totally rogue and attacked one of her. It was like her boss. Yeah. Attacked her superior, literally physically attacked him, was acting very crazy, very erratic, and then physically attacked her boss and was removed from the position. And it was, of course, the article was talking about, you know, this comes at a time where the Secret Service has talked about their focus on bringing in more women, you know, hiring on diversity. And I'm just like, you know, I have to at least admire the dedication that the Biden administration has to actually putting their money where their mouth is, so to speak, because you always have these companies, these Fortune 500 companies, Coca-Cola, for instance, where they're like, we're committed to hiring 50 percent uh, minorities in all of our outside vendors. And also and then you look at the board and it's all old white men. And you're like, you don't believe in this at all, because if you did, you would resign and allow, uh, you know, a black person or a Hispanic person or some sort of minority or a gay person to take your place. You're not doing that. You guys are all old white people saying you believe in diversity. But at least Kamala is like, I believe in this so much that I'm going to trust that a woman can protect me more than a man. I just I well, don't yeah. think that's true. The, the board members of Coca-Cola are very smart individuals, to be honest, that know how to run a company. And even though that they are being asked, you know, that they will be saying that they're going to be doing these things because they, again, we've said this over and over about the marketing companies that are out there. They're all woke. Right. So they contact their marketing or the marketing department, which is all woke, and they'll go, this is what you need to do because this is what flies. And, and what we're seeing, we're seeing it in movies all across the board is that it just doesn't. But here's the great thing about, about Kamala Harris. Like, this is literally the person that is going to save your life. That's what I'm saying. Like, if, if you're not going to go, you know, we talk about all this DEI stuff, but like, I want the most qualified for the job when it comes to saving my life. I want the dude. And she still is like, yeah, I, you know what? Let's hire off of diversity. And I, I want the crazy person who <laughs> is emotional and attacks her boss. Because right. how is that going to turn out for you, darling? Right. Like, you're attacking your boss. Do you think that's going to work out well? Who, by the way, is probably a ninja as well. So it's not like it's not going to work out well for you. But this is one of the things that we keep saying. And we, we are, look, be careful what you wish for. Right, mm -hmm. Be careful what you wish for, because what has happened over the years is people have said, we need this, we need this, we're fighting for equality, we're fighting for this. We're, and it's, it's almost like they're so invested in the struggle, mm -hmm. they don't think about what happens when actually they get it. <laughs> and what has happened is they've got it. Clearly. And, and you're kind of like, well, yeah, you've got 120-pound firefighters that can't right. drag a, somebody like me out of a building. Right. People start dying. It's a real thing. Yeah. But, yeah. um you guys carry on over there at the Secret Service. You, right? yeah, let's knock see how that out. works out with a uh, female, you know, a bunch of female Secret Service agents, which, by the way, this was my favorite part of this. And then we can get back to Corinne Jean-Pierre. I was going to say something very rude and I decided not to. Um, was that this Secret Service, the woman, when she started acting out, was apparently like tackled and restrained by the men. Do you know why? Because they're stronger than her. So you tell me how that would work out with all Secret Service, w women in the Secret Service. So going back to Corinne Jean-Pierre, you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> part of me does feel sorry for her because how bad would it suck to be Joe Biden's press secretary? You get at, like, they're like, why did Joe Biden say freedom over democracy? Why did Joe Biden say four more years Pause. Right. Like you have actually legitimately tough questions that nobody could find a good answer to. So you almost have to feel sorry for her. If she wasn't just such an evil liar, you might feel sorry for her. But she says, OK, she says that her job is very, very hard. Here's a clip of that. Watch. Maybe. We're trying to, to get that because the job is hard. The job yes, is, is hard. And it's hard not just for me, but for all of my colleagues. It's, it's a difficult job, what we're trying to do on behalf of the American people for this president. Don't be and so that. it is not easy. And so sometimes we try to like have a little that. bit of fun. Yes. And so right before I walk out, we try to loosen up a little bit because what I'm about to experience at the podium is. <laughs> so I'm telling you. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's going to be a journey. Like it's going to be a journey. <laughs> going to be a journey. I, look, <laughs> is the job difficult? Yes, it is. Yes. 
But that's not what we're saying here. We're not saying the job is difficult. We're saying that you are completely incompetent at doing said job, right? We know it's difficult, but then you have to go through a process to be good enough to do it. Right. And the fact is, is that, you know, look, astrophysics is difficult, right? It is. It's yeah. difficult, yeah. but you have to know what you're doing to do it. It's not like me. If you had me like designing your planes, you'd be in a lot of trouble or trying to get us, you know, working for SpaceX. So you don't hire those people for those jobs. It's quite simple. It, it, you know, it's, it's very, 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 very difficult if you are clueless and stupid. <laughs> Which she is. I want to read um, some quotes from some of her uh, some of her colleagues here. Kareen doesn't have an understanding of the issues and she reads the binder word for word, which is absolutely true. Uh, she thinks she's doing an amazing job. She doesn't <laughs> she doesn't have a grasp of the issues and doesn't spend the time to learn. There's an enormous amount of work that goes into getting ready. And consistently, she does not put in that level of work. I believe you. Mm -hmm. I actually believe you because we have said, I know uh, Stubergear has said it a lot, which is like, she's just reading from the binder word for word. At this point, just save the taxpayers the money and just release the binder. Yeah. <laughs> release the binder. <laughs> because she that's all we need. We can just read the transcript of the binder because that's literally all she's doing. And you can see her eyelashes flutter while she's doing it. When she gets overwhelmed. But again, it's how many times have we said this is you're setting people up to fail as well, right? So you'd yeah. think, you'd think that, look, oh, I've got this job, so I've got to work really hard, is it? even if you're bad. But I don't know this about her because I don't know anything about her history. I know she went to an Ivy League college. She's right? gay. No. <laughs> no, I haven't heard that over and over and over again. She's also black. What? <laughs> Just wanted to make sure I don't you know. know. But look, she clearly as I mean, I'm not saying that she hasn't done any work because I don't know, but if you get things handed to you, right, then why do you have to work? You don't have to work for anything. That's a great point. If you get well, I, I would qualify if you get things handed to you solely because of, you know, your who who you prefer having sex with or your skin color. Yeah. And it's like, well, I mean, I didn't actually really do anything to qualify for this job, so why would I work? There's no point. And yeah, it, no, and no. it shows, Kareen. Okay, it shows. Um, so I want to get to to this as well. So reports are coming out that uh, Joe Biden has been as has been assigned a walker to assist him. And I think that we have uh, a little clip of the times where he's had to have maybe some help versus on his own. I thought it meant like Joe Biden is a walker, like the walking dead. Yeah. That's what he moves like, like a zombie. So stiff. I He's just, I just was... so stiff. And we saw uh, AOC the other day. They had this Earth Day commemoration and she was like holding his hand and guiding him off of the stage because we know that Joe Biden cannot be trusted to know which way to go off of the stage, which really seems to be very, very elementary because he has an aide telling him this way, Joe. And he's like, uh, 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 And then always goes the wrong way. Look, we can... Things are going great. No, well, this is the point. Look, you've got someone who's clearly too old to be in office. Let's just... Put that to one side, right? Because mm -hmm. his cognitive ability is gone. We all know this. Aside from all that, aside from the fact that he will be the one deciding whether we go to war with Pit. Well, we know it's not him, but you right. know, he's the he's be. the right. guy, right. right? If that was your husband, if that was you, Stephen, There's Stephen, no I way. don't know where you are. I'm right here. There you go. <laughs> you would want to say. I, would I can't never. do this to I him. would never. I, I, I can't put him out like this and embarrass him. I would never. It is so oh, it is. bad. I would never. How, how, how desperate for power do you need to be to let this happen? Wait, how much money would I get? I'm kidding, Stephen. I'm kidding. Are, are you? <laughs> yes, I'm kidding. I know legitimately it is... Um, the fact that I've said this before, the fact that Joe Biden has not one family member 
I mean, he has a wife, he has children, he has grandchildren. The fact that not one family member would say, we cannot do this to him anymore. It's not right. The fact that not one family member loves him enough to say that is really saying something. Well, I mean, and also run again. I mean, it's yeah. not just now. I mean, I thought he was too old the last right. time. Right. And now he's gone four years. Clearly he's deteriorated. It's not gotten better. We'll tell you that. I don't know what drugs they, they're giving him or whatever it is, because every time, I, I don't know if you guys like this, every time I watch him, I'm like, what's he going to do? I don't know what he's going to do. I legitimately, I say this not in jest, okay, very seriously. I legitimately, every time I see him in one of those press conferences where it's not the State of the Union, where they've clearly put him on something, I legitimately am scared that he is going to collapse and die. Yeah. I, 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 legitimately, I, no, like that's not a joke. I was going to say that as well. Like you sit there and you're like, is this going to be it? He's going right. to pop his clogs on television. And, and then, but listen, if he does, if he does, we have the political powerhouse. That is Kamala Harris. <laughs> I thought you were actually going somewhere with that. I was like, wait, who do we? Oh, her. Yeah. Um, by the way, speaking of that, I know we have to go to break here in a second. But speaking of that, I just saw, I don't think we have it, but I just saw there was a clip on, on Twitter that was Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Oh, yeah. Sitting here like a fat slob. Shabba. Fat slob saying, say, oh, do we have it? Okay, great. Um, I'm probably jumping the gun. Um, okay, so let's let's play Chris Christie, fat slob Chris Christie, um, saying that Donald Trump doesn't have the physical fitness to be president, I guess. Chris Christie, watch. I would have preferred any of those people over Trump. Hmm. Ramaswamy and Trump, I would have hoped for a death match. <laughs> oh, this is, okay. No, we don't have it. Die. A literal, a literal death yes. match. <laughs> or they both die. This oh. isn't the clip that I was thinking of. So I, I can um, do it though. Can I act it out? Please. Hey, look at me. Uh, look at me. Uh, Trump isn't as sexy as I am. Oh, yeah. Look at what a specimen I am. That's Chris Christie with a... It was basically it. He's he, just like... He is, he does. He's he, I've been looking at him. He looks physically uh, incapable of being president. Bro, have you seen yourself? At least Trump is in his 80s. You've been 500 pounds since you were, I don't know, 20? I thought you were going to say like since you were like six. But, you know, I mean, he, he has no self-awareness. What... These people have no self-awareness. I don't understand it. This continues to happen. Trump broke him. Mm -hmm. He broke him and mm -hmm. he can't get over it. It's like a bunch of those other ones like Scaramucci and um, who's it? Cohen. They, they are just so consumed. You can see every day. It's like, yeah, it's good. Trump, Trump, Trump. Oh, they're broken. Which I want to I want to talk about Trump later on in the in the show. Um, but uh, I know we have to take a quick break. We will be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Relief Factor. So um, if you are one of millions of Americans, you just live in constant pain and you're like, well, this is my life now. Not so. Try Relief Factor. 70% of the people who order their three-week quick start that they have go on to keep ordering it. That's how many people it's working for. So the odds are in your favor that if you are in pain, it can help get you out of pain. And wouldn't that be life-changing? I know from personal experience, I've had uh, back, cervical, spine problems, protruding discs. Not fun, okay? Um, so, but I, Relief Factor has worked for me. It's worked for so many people in this building. And it actually tackles the root cause of the pain, which is the inflammation. So you're not just putting on a Band-Aid. You are actually tackling the root cause. You can get that three-week quick start over at relieffactor.com. That is relieffactor.com. All right, we got one more panelist at the table now. Eric July, founder of Ripiverse Comics, also Blaze TV contributor. Happy Friday, Eric. Hey. hey. Um, so you guys are going to be shocked to hear that multiple leaders of all of the anti-Israel protests that are popping up at college campuses across the country uh, have been revealed to be paid fellows of George Soros-connected groups. No way. George Soros is funding all of the chaos and discord that after he we knew that he was funding like the BLM riots and we saw all these 
weird pallets of bricks that were all, no way. So three of the major figures in the pro-Palestine encampments in the universities are fellows at the Soros-funded U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights. This is coming from the New York Post. And uh, the organization, let's see, they're, they're being paid, these fellows are being paid up to $7,800 for their labor. Those are community-based fellows. Campus-based fellows are given between $2,880 and $3,660 for spending eight hours a week organizing campaigns led by Palestinian organizations, and they instruct their fellows to rise up and spark revolution while specifically telling them to reject reform. And um, I'm shocked. If I had a if I had pearls, I would clutch them. I would be very, very shocked to tell you that George Soros is funding this. Mm. <laughs> to me, it just it, it, it oh, look, it just confirms that none of this is organic. I mean, it never was no. uh, more than anything. So regardless of who backed it, obviously, Soros and his sort of involvement uh, over the years uh, in, in various sort of uh, activist organizations, be it aside. Because regardless, it's it well, all it highlights is that none of this is real per se. They are being incentivized with the uh, dollar dollar bill and has less to do with like legitimate uh, activism, which is why I mean, I believe that. Like, yeah, I mean, considering where a lot of this stuff is concentrated on college campuses, these young folk don't know nothing from nothing. I know I didn't know when I was that young either. But if you do see these sort of men on the streets conversations with that they have with these activists they ask them like what what exactly are we protesting here so good they're like i don't know they have no idea i don't know did you see the nyu protest yes, yes, like, yes. I, I think nyu is doing do hey do you know if nyu is doing anything like wh i think actually i think that we have that um let's to your point eric let's let's play that quickly and what would you say is the main goal with tonight's uh protest i think the goal is just showing our support for palestine and demanding that nyu stop i honestly don't know okay. all of what nyu is doing is there something that NYU is doing? I really don't oh. know. I'm pretty sure they're... Do you know what NYU is doing? Oh, yeah. What about Israel? Why are we protesting here? Oh, the mask. Yeah, it's perfect. It's all perfect. I wish I was more educated. I'm not I here. wish oh. you were too. I came from Columbia. I was there up at Columbia, and we came down. They said NYU students needed our support. So I came Why? down. I heard there's lots of cops. Some people were saying it was getting dangerous. <laughs> Sheep. Yeah. That's all they are. Yeah, this is not that is real. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about at all. I mean, you ask, and I would argue if you ask the vast majority of them there, like, what exactly are, are we protesting? They don't know. They, we just had this conversation, I believe, Tuesday here, where we talked about these like impressionable, like young people, and that's purposely why these people target that that demographic because they'll basically eat up anything, right? And uh, because. Everybody's trying to reinvent the wheel of activism. They want to fit. Every, look, it is quite literal definition of first world problems is what, what's happening here. This era that, that we're living through now, arguably, yes, there's conflict in the Middle East, but there always has been. But you're right. still living in the most peaceful times in human history. Let's just be completely honest about this. Not to say things don't maybe suck in some capacity, but that's the honest to God's truth. So what has to happen is that everybody wants their movement. Everybody wants their moment. They want to feel like I'm doing something and I'm a part of something that is going to be remembered uh, forever. The civil rights activists, mm -hmm. if you will. None of them are that. And none of them can even tell you what they are part of. But this is why I always say, Sarah, like activism is the occupation of losers. That's what you're seeing right now. Yeah, they they lack purpose in their lives. We've, we've spoken about this before. Yeah. They want they feel like like everyone does. Everyone has that hole in their life to have self-worth. Right. And 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 real self-worth comes from giving to something else. Right. And normally we would say that would be a God or, you know, something that you would think was a noble exploit it used to be. I'm going to go and join the military. I'm going to go and, you know, fight for my country, whatever it is. And this is what it is for them. Um, what is interesting, it's the same thing with what happened with the lockdowns. And, uh, you know, I wasn't around here, so I didn't, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what your, your guys' stances were, but when I came out against BLM, right, because it was clearly, you know, AstroTurf, right? It was c clearly lies, clearly manipulated, not organic, as you said. It wasn't, uh, they, they, they did a really good job of, of kind of guiding people. Well, now you can really see it. And so what they've done is they've taken that, 
that um, formula and they've moved it over here. So I hope that what that does is people that were suckered into that last movement, now we're going to look mm -hmm. and go, oh, okay, I see it now. I really see that I'm being manipulated or I was manipulated because these people are being manipulated. But let me ask you this. What is the end goal? Is it just chaos? Is that is it just conflict? Yeah. Yes. Is that what it is? That's it? I think that it, that's really what it is. It's, it's, it's a ripe demographic to create said um, conflict, right? right? Um, also, if you have like, look, the major players may know exactly what they advocate, right? Pushing that on to other people is going to be a different ball game. Mm -hmm. So they have to be creative. They have to be sleazy. They have to be grimy and dirty. So what better way to do that than to go to that impressionable class and say, you know, this is we're going to give you a cause to fight for, right? You don't even need to really know the the ins and outs of, of what's happening uh, happening right now, let alone the actual conflict between Palestinians and uh, and Israel. You don't need to know any of that. Just understand that this this is the set of purpose that we're going to we're going to give you. So I do believe it's also it is about the chaos. But on the other hand, I do also believe that the actual handlers, the shot callers know exactly yes. what they want. And they're, yes. they're more they're far more purposeful. But that's why I think they target these certain demographics that will go out there and advocate um, for whatever you brought up the, the, the COVID uh, thing that I mean, we saw a large block, a large body of, of, of people that were just all on board for something that was objectively wrong. So while they may have been going into it with a different idea, I do believe those that wanted the control got the control they ultimately uh, wanted and COVID may have been their, their vehicle. So there's sinister stuff at play as well. So um, when we talk about all of these protests and look, uh, yesterday, a couple days ago, they happened in Texas and um, they shut them down effectively. And that was great. Uh, it should have happened. I was uncomfortable with the language that Governor Abbott used saying anti-Semitism is not what I, I'm I'm. This, this isn't the, the exact quote. OK, I'm paraphrasing, but something along the lines of anti-Semitism will not be tolerated in the state of Texas. Well, that's a clear First Amendment violation. I think that he just like I think it's one of those things where you're, you think you're saying something very strong. You're taking a stance against something. And then you're like, I probably shouldn't have phrased it that way because I, like you have to allow people free speech, um, even if they're assholes. Right. Like there are assholes in this world. And you know what? I'm glad because, well, I'm glad that they have the ability to tell us who they are. Right. Because True. if someone is racist, I want to know that they're racist. Yep. And if they run a cake shop, I won't go to their cake shop. About all the time. Right. Like if, if, if someone on right, if someone is anti-Semitic, I want to know because oh. you know what? I'm not going to befriend them. Right. So um, so I, it was Again, I don't believe that Governor Abbott wants to quash uh, free speech in this state. I think that he just mis misspoke. Probably should clarify that. But what's going on in Florida has been incredible. Um, over there at the University of Florida, they passed out this piece of paper to all of the demonstrators, said allowable activities, speech, expressing viewpoints, holding signs in hands, prohibitive items and activities, no amplified sound, no demonstrations inside buildings, no littering, no camping, no sleeping, no unmanned san signs. I mean, it's no disruption, no threats, no camping, no violence, no weapons, uh, and then any other items and or activities deemed to be non-compliant with policy and regulations by university officials. Consequences for noncompliance. Uh, oh, well, you're going to be trespassed from the campus. You're going to receive three year trespass and suspension. And by the way, if you're an employee, you will also be trespassed and separated from from employment. Good. And we didn't see any problems over there in Florida. And that is how you do it. And I saw um, I haven't seen if this actually came to fruition, but I saw that a bunch of the uh, University of Texas employees put out this letter after the protests happened and these uh, protesters or, you know, um, I guess illegal encampmenters found out what happens when you do something illegal. Um, these employees of the University of Texas put out a letter that was basically saying, we're going to stand with them. No going to work, no working, no grading papers, no nothing. And if the University of Texas did not fire every single one of them, I will be so embarrassed for this state. So embarrassed because that is how you have to handle this. We do not 
I don't negotiate with terrorists. I don't care if it's my three-year-old toddler. I don't care if it's a uh, a 20-year-old toddler who's attending the University of Texas. I don't care if it's a 40-year-old toddler who actually happens to work there. You don't demand things from me. That's not how any of this works. It's such a simple solution, is it not, right? And I know Google recently had to go through this same thing where they fired like 28 people that were uh, employees that were that was great. Uh, uh, you know, doing a protest, I believe, on the, like sim- on the same or subject, yeah, yeah, or something. He's like, "Get out!" Like, yeah. well, the CEO was like, "This is this is not." And granted, not how this works. Google Google has kind of set themselves up for failure with some of the other things that they advocate. But logically speaking, that's how you handle it. It's right. like, okay, we're doing something that has nothing to do with what's going on in Palestine, uh, Palestine and uh, Israel. Nothing. Right. It has nothing. We're completely de- detached right. from that, right? That has nothing to do with us. You're now bringing, you're re- effectively rebel rousers, right? You're bringing that conflict that has nothing to do with the business to the business, right? And you're expecting us to have to answer to you? No, get out. Yeah. Get out. It should be that simple. None of this has anything to do with educational as nothing, nothing. You're just being rebel rousers. Yep. So get out. It's a very simple solution. It does not require a rocket scientist to, to, to in, in this conflict or nonsense that's happening at these campuses. Yeah. But they built it. They built it. And so here's the thing. Again, I don't sit there and created the little activists. They did it. It's the little monsters that they put out there. But but here's the thing. I do not trust anyone in this day and age to do the right thing. We've seen it over and over again. You can't expect the authorities. You can't expect anyone to do the right thing. But what you can do is you can do the right thing. So what you need to do is look at every single one of these colleges and you've got to cross it off your college list for your kids. It's simple. I don't know why people still send their kids to these schools. It's this weird kind of cognitive dissonance where they go, oh, well, you know, uh, it's my alma mater. And oh, and, oh we got to get a degree from NYU. And uh, it, th- those days are gone. That's They're true. gone. That's it's over. Statement. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's yeah sure. you're right. Um, okay. All right. When we come back, an update on uh, how it's going in the Donald Trump hush money trial when we return. Got something to say? Leave Sarah a message at 888-969-5113. We have now gone through day eight of the Donald Trump Stormy Daniels hush money trial. And um, I know it was uh, Melania's birthday today, which Trump had to wish her a happy birthday from from Manhattan. He wasn't allowed. He's not allowed to leave. That's what the judge said. Every day that we have this trial, you must be here. And I'm sure it's a total coincidence that that is preventing him from attending his son's graduation, from being there for Melania's birthday, from actually, you know, campaigning because he's running for president. Total coincidence. The judge definitely wasn't trying to prevent him from doing that. But I want to talk about how it's going for him and what the American public Sees Because what I've seen is a whole lot of, I don't understand why you guys are doing this to him. Yeah, I'm hearing about this former National Enquirer publisher who got on the stand and said that they used to kill stories that were negative to Donald Trump. Is that a crime? No? Okay, why are we talking about it? Why is he up there? Why is he a witness? What did he what what's the crime that he witnessed? I don't know. I still don't know. And so I want to play a couple clips here from uh, Trump's, he went and met with construction workers uh, and the union that were there in New York. And I want to play one of the union workers who uh, had quite the message for Joe Biden. Watch. What's it like seeing so many Republicans in Manhattan, so many Trump supporters in Manhattan? Does that surprise you? No, not at all. It's turning now. Trump's turn again. What's your message to Joe Biden? you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have put it better myself. Um, I want to play one more clip here. I know. It's Manhattan. It cannot be lost on you. Manhattan, New York City. Okay, I want to play one more clip here of one of the union leaders uh, going a little bit further into why they are shifting to the right for Donald Trump. Watch. We are tired of immigration. We're tired of our tax cut dollars going to immigration. We're tired of the crime. We need to put a handle on things in this country and bring it back to how it should be. I put out a poll in my union. President Trump is leading Joe Biden three to one on my presidential poll out of my 9,000 members right now. We are very tired of the situation with groceries, uh, inflation, gas prices, illegal immigration, crime. 
We are living it every day in New York City. By the way, a majority of likely voters say a conviction of crime in any of Donald Trump's various legal cases would have, quote, no effect on their vote choice. That was 67 percent of people who were polled. So. I'm just saying I'm trying to bring some some positivity. I'm trying to bring some optimism to uh, this Friday's show. Perhaps the tides are turning. That's the, the new again, New York City, Manhattan, union workers, three to one. Look, I can see it. I feel like Eric, don't you do this? All right, all right, don't all you right. don't you ruin my day? I'm kidding. Go all ahead. Right. Don't no, you see- go there, Ricky Bobby? <laughs> I'm kidding. All I'm right, kidding. But seriously, it's I do feel that there are a lot of normies who would vote basically for whoever told them. You know, let's say maybe it's limited to geographical area. They're going to vote for who they were always going to vote for. But I think with between like inflation and seeing things get worse at a more accelerated rate mm-hmm. in, uh, in comparison to years past has sort of peeled a uh, red peeled a lot of uh, normies. Right. On, on various subject matters. Does it work enough for them to then turn around and support the guy that they've been told to hate for the last eh, eight years or so? I don't know. Um, I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. But it does seem like they are at least understanding that something here is not right. Now, this is the black pill of it all. Uh. We have to then take into consideration that they, they're smart enough to put two and two together. Don't tell me that, Eric. No, seriously. They have to put, okay. They're not. They know things suck. So now they got to figure out, okay. A lot of okay, them are not. What, why? <laughs> okay. Right. And, and, and even so, what is the president's contribution to that or his party for that matter? What are their contributions to the setup that we have right now the, or the atmosphere, whatever you want to call it, the, the current landscape or reality that they are living? What does the president have to do with that? And is that going to then in turn change their their voting habits? I don't know. But yeah. that's depending on them working through it logically, because I've had this conversation uh, before with you, Sarah. You know, it's one thing to because I can talk with the leftist down the street. Right. And say we can come to the conclusion that the government sucks. Both of us. It'll be the same exact conclusion. It'll be like, yeah, I don't like the current government. But why? They think that, that's the, the case. Isn't doing enough. Bingo. I think they do yeah. far too, right. too much. And right. that is the problem. So we're fundamentally different. And this is why I say just recognizing that things suck. Mm-hmm. That's not enough. That's not enough. That's fair. Well, but also you have to factor in how many because we've already seen it in the primaries. Maybe they don't go through with it in the general. But you've seen these. Rat, this, these little radicals that they've created who are throwing a hissy fit because Joe Biden hasn't come out uh, against Israel and they're just not they're not showing up. So I do think that you also have, you know, a certain sector of Democrat voters who are very, very radical, who may not feel compelled to show up on Election Day and vote for Joe Biden. Yeah, I think before in the last election, which by the way, hold on. I just want to make sure I'm I'm clear. On, they're not showing up. They're not going and voting for Trump. They're just not no, showing they're up. Not, they're right. not going to turn up. But I think in the last election, and I have my thoughts about that last election, um, I think that you had some people were very motivated to vote against Trump. I actually think right now that when you see him, you capture him a little bit on TV, he becomes more and more of a sympathetic character. I agree. I really do. I think he's becoming more and more of a sympathetic character. He's not, I mean, apart from his truth social post, right, he's not being as dynamic as what he used to be as in like, you know, uh, he'd be be on it. And in a way, that's softened him a little bit to the, the, in the opinion of other people. So I feel very, very positive about this because as we've said- Take that, Eric. (laughs) Yeah, dude. No, because, because unfortunately- it has to be personal. It has to become personal. It has to hurt you personally. And I think like over the years, if you look even through, you know, the Trump presidency, although it was it got really radical, right, with them burning things down and COVID and everything. Yeah, I would but, say that's but, a little radical. Which is crazy if you look back at this insane time. But if you look back before then, if you look at Obama and the Bushes and all that, those of you that are politically engaged will go, oh, that's a really bad thing. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a really bad thing. But it was pretty much like this. There wasn't any real dramatic moves in the economy, not, not a lot. It was pretty steady. 
And now, I mean, it, the, the shit has really hit the fan. Everyone's feeling it. You know, you're yeah. seeing people going, hang on a minute, I've got five items at the, in my grocery bag and, and it's, it's $110, yeah. you know? So I think that it's becoming personal, cer certainly with the immigration, because immigration was just like Texas, California, you know, Arizona, who really cares? When you bring 9 million people in, which is what they were saying through, through the Biden administration, people are seeing it everywhere, including those dudes that are the construction workers in New York are seeing an influx of migrants come in that are taking their jobs. Which, to your point, let's actually, let's delve into that. Um, I know we got to take a break. So let's delve into that when we come back. To your point, Matt. Oh, by the way, you needed to make a yeah, clarification. I, yeah, I said migrant, and I never say migrant. I mean illegal. He meant alien. illegal alien. Illegal, illegal alien, not migrant. But that's what gets in your I head because they keep they saying write it. it over and over and over and over again. Every publication, it's just migrants. And it's like, I don't, we're not going to give them that much credit. Okay, to your point, what I'm reading from right now says a majority of Americans favor the mass deportation of, it does say illegal but illegal migrants. Just call them illegal aliens, okay? This is from Axios. Uh, but a majority of Americans do favor mass deportations. That's huge. It's 51% uh, throughout, okay? And it's four in 10 Democrats who favor mass deportations and uh, four in 10 Latinos and Blacks who support mass deportations. Uh, by the way, yes, I said four in 10 Latinos. And honestly, I'm shocked that it's that low. I would have thought that it was higher because all of the legal citizens, whether or not they're a legal immigrant or they are just an American citizen like me who was born here and their parents were American citizens and born here. It is not fair to the rest of everyone else. I'm sorry. I feel dumb talking about this when I have this man sitting right next to me. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, it pisses me off. It's not when. fair to people who do it the right way. And you think because I share the same skin color or heritage as someone that I'm going to be like, yeah, that's awesome that they get to come in and skip the line and screw everyone else who's doing it the right way. It's so awesome that they get to come in here completely unvetted and they get a phone and a free place to live and all of these other things that none of us get. It, that's so cool because we both have brown skin. That's dumb. Yeah, and they're also figuring out now it's not just Hispanics. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not. It's people from all over the world, and, and it's a massive, massive problem. And again, it's like anything. If you, you know, you don't want to be tarnished in the same way as other people that look like you, right? Like, you don't want to be saying, hey, listen, I don't you thinking that I'm an illegal. Like, I came here. I did it the legitimate way. I did, uh, you know, I, I followed the process. And here's the thing. It's so important that immigrants do go through the process, that it is something very special, like it was to me. And again, I've said this a thousand times, and just an update. There is no update on my son's situation for him coming into this country legally, none. He's got a four year wait, four years. Right? Have you considered doing it the right way. flying him to Tijuana? <laughs> Have you? <laughs> Should we do a Blaze uh, original <gasps> on it and fly him in? <laughs> yes. 100% yes. I'd only do it if we spoke to Trump and when he gets in that my son doesn't get into trouble. No, but you've got to do things. You're, you're the first, your first action in your new adopted country cannot be an illegal act. Right. It just can't be. Yeah. It can't be. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, um, Eric, I want to get your thoughts here, but I want to I want to throw this out here in this poll. When asked to identify their greatest concern around illegal immigrations, these people most frequently cited a 21 percent said increased crime rates, drugs and violence. Uh oh, hold on. We had a president, an incoming president who said that we were bringing in rapists. Go ahead. They're not bringing They're their, not best. Sending their best. <laughs> They're not sending their best. <laughs> Rapists, gang members, uh, right. murderers, whatever he said, uh, which, of course, we all knew was absolutely correct. And now people are like, you know, maybe we have increased crime rates and more drugs and more violence because of all these unvetted strangers we're bringing in. I don't know. Yeah, there was a man who said that and you guys impeached him and told him to go away. I think the biggest part of it is the culture shock. I mean, I'm not going to bore everybody with a history lesson, but... 
this has happened historically where you will get a group of people that lived at one place and maybe they lived among themselves peacefully. Right. And then they went to another place among other people who were peaceful before they got there. And then conflict got created just simply because they were culturally incompatible. Mm -hmm. There was no assimilation. And Mm -hmm. I know uh, people might not like that term, but I'm speaking. It doesn't like even if you looked at it from a from a micro standpoint, if there was an outsider, right, that was uh, you had a particular inner circle, if you will. And there was an outsider that didn't understand how y'all got on, got along. You could see how that could just screw up the entire dynamic. You need assimilation in order to be a functioning society. Exactly. It doesn't matter how big or small we're talking about in terms of its culture. There has to be some level of understanding there. And that whole thing is skipped through whatever the hell it is that we have it even if you remove the government from it like it's it's just skipped there's no culture shock would exist regardless doesn't matter if they're being who's bringing them in checking the box it doesn't matter so i think that's what the american people are are, are seeing right now is that and and to your point and that's a real thing right you got you've been here your parents have been here um you guys have adopted sort of this line of thinking. And just because you share a sim- similar last name or skin tone as somebody else, it's not me, y'all, on the same page. Yeah. As the old saying says, all skin folk ain't kin folk. And, that, <laughs> and that's real. That's, that's real talk. Just because, like, I'm sure there's a bunch of people uh, from uh, West, Western Africa that have the same exact skin tone as me. We live two completely different lifestyles. Right. I'm more, I'm, I, I relate more to you guys right. than I do to them, right. and it has nothing to do with skin tone. It's just because I'm from here. Yeah. Simple as that. I'm yeah. from here. Wow. Sounds like something a race trader would say. <laughs> um, we got to say, I joke because I've been called that, and yeah. I know yeah. you've been called yeah. that probably more than me. Yeah. Um, all right. We got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right. So. I want to play for you guys a, a drag queen who was leading a children's story time hour who decided to chant this in Massachusetts. Today what we're going to do is we're going to shout Free Palestine. Can I hear that? Free Palestine! If you're a drag queen and you know it, shout Free, free Palestine. Palestine! If you're a drag queen and you know it, shout Free Palestine. If you really want to show it, you're a drag queen and you know it, shout First of all, none of those children are drag queens, so that's just a really stupid chant. Um, Second of all, I would love for this drag queen to show up in Palestine and see what happens and how long he's allowed to live. My guess is it's not too long before he gets thrown off of a building, but free Palestine. But where are the parents? I mean, I, I, the parents are right uh, there. I know, apart They're from right the, there. Apart from all the other, like, what is going on? It's like there's a, a ripple in the space time continuum or something with all that was going on there. But they should take those kids away from those parents. It's as simple as that. That's that really is child abuse. It's disgusting. Why are they always fat? It's pretty sick, man. Because they can't control their appetites, whatever it is. Seriously, like they can't control their appetites in food. They can't control, control their sexual appetites. They're um, degenerates. They are degenerates. They are that. Sure. You ask where the parents are. They're there. They're all mentally ill, liberal white women. Yeah. They're saying it's the kids. Trying to mix all of these corny little movements together, right? Drag queen with skin the, folk with the yeah, all skin folk ain't kid. <laughs> I'm just telling you. That's for sure. I'm just that saying. That is for sure. <laughs> Thanks, guys. 